Quince jelly. It's the thinnest of skins, the membrane between being and nothingness. Transparent or opaque, or sometimes both, as when sealing a row of half-pint jars, the clear melted paraffin clouding as it cools and slowly hardening towards the center, still soft, you could poke a finger, the jelly trembling when disturbed in such a beautiful color, an ethereal amber, but pale, pale and translucent, the color, say, of the soul, freshly entered through the top of the infant's skull, the soft fontanelle finally closing to the light streaming down as the bones knit together. That will have to do. Note, a jellyfish is not a fish. It has no lungs, heart, muscles, bones. Simple neurons help it move with sensors around the rim, detecting up from down, light from dark. A moon jelly. Rare since they commonly drift in swarms to view a lone moon jelly. The whitish opaque bell, doubly veiled. Picture a light mist across a moon seen through eyes clouded, one's thoughts elsewhere. The moon jelly room. Waves continued to arc in great swells and break thunderous along the shore of Monterey Bay. While sheltered from wind and rain, we shuffle through the narrow moon jelly room, mirrored at either end to reflect the crowd into infinity. Cameras, perambulators, the smell of wet wool. Moon jellies, moon jellies. A current of salt water pumped from the aquarium basement buoys them either side behind floor to ceiling glass. Moon jellies, moon jellies. Pulsing at either temple, they belie the variety of plaid, striped, flowered, and black umbrellas snapped violently inside out, spokes broken. These fringed white parasols floating up in a watery blue sky. Myriad they pulse and drift like happy memories for anyone to recall. Anyone in this mirrored crowd. Awed there could be so many and so alike as if all happy memories were alike. Oasis. Noon and to the south, mercury shimmers in the wind-tousled palms. Clustered to an oasis when all else scatters sparse, flat, until troubled into mountains. Near the palms loom as mammoths, skirted with brown, down-drooping layers of years vulnerable to a dropped match. A stray spark catching the imagination, where a trunk issues blackened and shorn. In the hallowed clearing, palms towering in a shaggy ring, recurs the wedding of place and time, attended by a sand beetle and mourned by the wind, which foresees with a rustle of taffeta the early death of the bride. With evening, what has died is the wind. On the bluff, every creosote bush has gathered to a nucleus, its quail for the night, all one can safely know. The birds doze in circles facing out, ready to scatter in overlapping rings at the slightest mention. Drifting, the high moon keeps its distance, holds it close as I would be held. Let me guess, in a pool half hidden by reeds floats another moon, gilded, tremulous from the glide of a water strider. Am I close? Am I even warm? The seventh day. In the shimmering heat, every plant grows jealous of its dime of shade. The coyotes slinking backwards, all needs shrunken and withdrawn into the brain stem. Though at dawn, the sharp spine of a cactus will attract a single drop of dew and roll the tear down into the eye. Forty days, we are told, and forty nights, Christ consumed only his hunger and poured cool thirst over his hunched shoulders as he sat studying the palm of the human hand. Mirage. Around the shallow green pool, 
Fan palms tower. A cottonwood leans. Reeds bend low over the bank's soft lip, where the real and the reflected drink from the same source. Birds of the oasis divide their time between the two as they dip and swerve and flit from branch to reflected branch. <laughs>